Dear colleagues, this is congenital genular cataract in a 10 year old girl. I have taken up this case for surgery. Let us see how it was done. The main incision is being placed just posterior to the limbus and a tunnel of adequate length and then I enter into the anterior chamber. And now this is a side port on the right side of the main incision. The length of these stab incisions, tunnel incisions are such that it will not require suturing. And now the anterior capsule is being stained with tripan blue dye. It has been proved that staining of the anterior capsule changes the elasticity of the anterior capsule and capsular axis becomes easier. Little bit of adrenaline is also being administered and the people has dilated well. And now viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber and as usual I am using SPMC hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose no cohesive viscoelastic substance and now capsular excess is being done see how it is being done 26 case needle is introduced a flap is made now I hold this flap with a uterta forceps go anti-clockwise and it is a little tricky the capsule tends to go to periphery in children so here I pull towards the center again I go little towards periphery and now I try to remain along the border of this genular cataract and thus I get a nice rexus. That's it. And now I am doing hydro dissection with BSS and a 27 gauge cannula. See the fluid wave goes from this side to the other side and now I depress the nucleus and I see that the fluid wave comes along the equator anteriorly and it indicates that the cataract has separated from the posterior capsule. Now the central portion is hard in this case though the patient is only 10 years old. So I am using some amount of ultrasonic energy to emulsify this central hard core of this cataract. About 40% ultrasonic energy was used. And now the cortex is coming up along with the central portion, most of the cortex. And now we can see that there is a thick fibrous or calcified plaque at the center of the posterior capsule. I am using a Simco cannula to remove the cortex from the periphery. 
and it is coming very easily this is a 23 gauge simcoe cannula so the cortex is being removed now what to do with this central thick plaque if I try to do vitrector axis it may be difficult and I may not get a round central opening so what I have decided is I want to do posterior capsular axis with uterata forceps so I have injected HPMC again and now I am using the same needle 26 gauge band needle to make an opening in the posterior capsule here it is the needle is making a posterior capsular flap yes the nice flap has been made now I hold this flap with the uterata forceps go anti-clockwise include this fibrous plaque and a nice posterior capsular axis has been made I don't pull it out because then I will pull the vitreous strands through the main incision so what I do is I introduce a cutter and remove this thick fibrous or calcified plaque and now after removing this I want to do some anterior vitrectomy and while I did the vitrectomy the vitreous got now at this time through the main incision I am doing some amount of dry vitrectomy means vitrectomy without irrigation now as I introduce the irrigating proof I go through the other side port and start doing vitrectomy I am about 2-3 millimeter posterior to the plane of the posterior capsule I repeat I am about 2 to 3 millimeter posterior to the plane of the posterior capsule so I am not drawing vitreous into the entry chamber I am doing vitrectomy where the vitreous is but vitreous got hydrated to some extent and few vitreous strands came to the main incision so what I am doing is I am changing the instruments now irrigation is from the 8 o'clock and I am cutting the vitreous strands that came yes as I cut that the posterior capsular axis opening becomes round so this is an indication that the vitreous strands have been cut in this case I have not used trimsonorone acetate because I was 100% sure that vitreous strands are not there 
in the entry chamber. So nice vitrectomy has been made. Now I'm going to implant a multipiece intraocular lens in the space between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. Some amount of viscoelastic substance is being injected and a lot of this viscoelastic substance is going into the vitreous cavity through the opening in the posterior capsule which I will remove later after implanting the intraocular lens and now The, I have asked for a sensor multipiece intraocular lens. I'm forming the entire chamber, um, making the intraocular pressure, building the intraocular pressure with some irrigation of BSS and some more visco again. And now you see the lens the intraocular lens. Before implanting the intraocular lens, I am enlarging the main incision to about 3 mm. The incision size was 2.8 mm. Now it has been increased to 3 mm. This is the intraocular lens. This is a sensor multipiece intraocular lens. It is being implanted between the anterior capsular rim and the remnant of the posterior capsule. The leading haptic has gone at the right place and I am slowly delivering the lens so that the lens doesn't get tumbled. Injecting viscoelastic substance over the optic of the lens. Now I hold the trailing haptic with a macpherson's and see how I'm implanting it in the right place between the anterior rim and the posterior capsular remnant. Yes, it has gone. This is again. This is I'm checking the anterior capsular rim. Yes, it has gone at the right place. That's it. The surgery is done, but we have to do nice cleaning of the viscoelastic substance. The viscoelastic substance which is in the entry chamber is being removed by the Simcoe cannula. First I irrigate for some time, then I aspirate for some time. And thus the viscoelastic substance which is the entry chamber has come out. Now I ask for the vitrectomy cutter and irrigating probe again because there is a lot of viscoelastic substance in the anterior vitreous cavity. So I go behind the lens through the rexis opening through the opening of the posterior capsular rexis. I go into the anterior vitreous and start cutting and aspirating and thus I remove most of the viscoelastic substance that went into the vitreous cavity which I injected before I will implantation. I am spending sufficient amount of time to remove most of the viscoelastic substance. And during this maneuver, the sideboard at 1 o'clock is getting stressed. The anterior leaf of this sideboard is getting stressed. So I come out, but I don't remove the irrigating probe. If I remove the irrigating probe, the chamber will collapse. All the fluid will come out, the chamber will collapse, and the lens will almost 
touch the corneal endothelium. So what I do is I ask for air and my assistant injects air and then I come out. I inject some more air. And now I ask for pilocarpin and moxifloxacin. After injecting pilocarpin and moxifloxacin, I hydrate the stroma at the side ports so that these side ports become watertight. This is a 10 year old girl and I am quite sure that she will not require suturing of these wounds. But I will check the integrity of the wound before I close the surgery. And now I have to remove the air from the antechamber and conclude the case. Dear colleagues, it is not at all difficult to do such cases. You just have to increase your skills and all these challenging cases will be just under your control. Thank you very much for showing your patience. You have spent more than 17 minutes to watch this surgery. Hope this video will help you in managing your pediatric cases.